Alpaca Chroma's AI art system just received a massive upgrade. They've introduced generation masks as well as layers, which means you have even more control over the images that you create. This means if you use a generation mask, you can select a portion of the image and instead of regenerating everything, you will only change the section that you have selected. And with layers, that means that you can actually turn certain layers on or off and work non-destructively and take more control over your input image. Now, Alpaca are sponsoring this video. There's a link in the description if you wanna check it out, but otherwise, let's jump in and take a look. So I'm now in Alpaca Chroma. If you're not sure how to use Alpaca Chroma, I do have a video that's perfect to get you started. I'll link to it in the description below. First, we're going to touch on generation masks to show you how these work. So first of all, I'm going to draw an image here on the left. It's pretty basic. And then I'm going to come down here and give it a prompt. A Roman marble statue of a man, Unreal Render 3D Cinematic. Because we're just trying to get straight to it, we go to creative, so we get something that looks pretty decent. And click generate. And now we have this really cool picture of a statue. So what I want to do is actually hit this button here because I'm going to move this image across. So we have our statue there. Now let's say I wanted to put a spear in his hand. I could take my draw tool, go to brown, adjust my brush size, and I can basically draw a spear in through his hand here. Now, typically, we've got this image and we've got that spear. Now, if I add in here, comma, holding a spear and hit generate, you might not be able to tell, but the images are actually different. They're a little bit different and regenerated and he does he is holding a spear, but I really prefer my original image to the new one. So what I'm actually going to do is instead of going forward, I'm going to click on this generation mask tool or I can hit L on my keyboard and Something to take note is I can change the brush size. I'm going to keep it pretty big and the change amount. I can have this change amount set to 100 and that means it will change uh, you know, quite dramatically. Or you can see we hover over here, regions with a higher change amount will change more. So I can actually change, go up and down the level that this is actually going to change. So then I draw over the spear with the generation mask and I can then hit generate. And you can see we now have our spear which is really cool and if you look closely other than the spear they are the exact same image so it hasn't altered the image only the spear but that's a quick side note but also want to demonstrate the difference in change amount with your generation mask i'm going to draw a clock up on the wall it's just something pretty basic and i'm going to get my generation mask set that nice and low sort of under 30 percent and i'm just going to color over the top of that clock Notice the purple's a bit harder to see because it's more transparent. I add a clock on the wall or something like that into the prompt and I hit generate. And you notice the clock is pretty much the same, although slightly different. But when I crank that change amount all the way up to 100 and then I repaint over the clock and then when I'm done, I come down, hit generate the exact same prompt and you can see the clock looks much nicer and more detailed. Still pretty simple because I did a sim pretty simple drawing, but by enhancing the change amount, you give Alpaca more creativity within that space so it can produce better images or more detailed images from simpler drawings. But I'm gonna undo that and sort of pick up where we left off. It's also very important that you actually bring your image across if you wanna to continue to work in iterations and continue to improve parts of that image. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to get my draw tool, grab red, and I'm going to draw a red headband here grab my mask and cover this area. And then I'm gonna add on here, wearing a red headband, I generate. And you see it's out of the red headband, but we've gone and it's actually just copied the spear across. So one thing that's really important to note is when you're using generative masks is to actually work in iterations. So if I undo, and now what I'm gonna do is actually just quickly cover this again and hit generate. And now we've got our spear back in there again. I hit this button and we can start to work in iterations. So now this means I can start to edit the image in other ways. If I want this background color to change, I can get my brush out, change the color to say a purple, and I can quickly try my best to sort of draw around the statue. I can then get my generation mask and cover that same area. It doesn't matter if I overlap a little bit because I do not want to miss any of this area. And now I can add a purple sky in the background, hit generate, 
And you can see it's now got our same guy here, purple sky in the background. And then of course I can continue to move this across and reiterate. So if I want to, I can draw some building structures in the background. Grab my generation mask it again. Again, I add to my prompt. And you see how we can now start to take some direction with our AI art and alpaca. And I can come across here again and continued iterate from there. So that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna to get to a few use cases in a little bit, but there's something I wanna point out too, and that is layers. We can now actually use layers in Chroma to move things around. So let's say I've moved this across, and for some reason I actually prefer the sky without the Roman background, or even better, I want to remove a section. If I come up the top right here, I have a layers panel. First of all, I can hit the visibility eye here and turn that off completely, and I have my image with the drawing on it. I can move this down, come down to my original, and I can just sort of cycle through from there. One thing I can also do is take this here, and you see I've got some options. If I click on these three vertical dots, I could bring it to the front, I can send it forward one or send it right to the back. I can move how far up and down it goes, or I can simply click and drag it above the other one. And of course, I can delete layers as I see fit or even add new ones. So that way, if I want to, I can draw over the top of the image. So what I have right now is this image here. I can turn that off. I have this layer six above it. So if I want to, I can actually use my color picker to pick this color and shorten some of these structures if I want to as well. So I can just sort of color over the top like this. Then I can hit my generative mask and again, cover these areas I've drawn on and then make even further changes. So by drawing over the top of a layer, I can do that. I hit generate and it's shortened these structures. I'm gonna click this button to move this image across. And now when I go back to my layers, you see I've got layer six here. If I move that to the top, it has our sections that we've drawn. I'm now, I can now turn that layer off completely. And if I want to, let's say I have these two layers here, although let's bring this layer up. I have this layer here. And if I turn this layer on, the shorter structures. Let's say I want to keep this side of the image, but not the opposite side. So I decided I want to take this area back to where it was. What I can do, if I turn off every layer, except for the one I have open, I can now get my eraser tool out here, increase the brush size a little bit, and I can erase part of this layer. And where it gets really cool is that I can now go back to my layers, activate the layer underneath, and I have the original structure there. But one thing I'll take note, the reason you need to turn off these layers is if I use my eraser, it erases everything. So I'll go undo, and I can see there's some funny line work there, so I'm going to turn off the bottom layer and just continue to erase that. And now everything is back to the way it was on the right. And we have, so we actually have two generations combined together. And that's pretty handy. And at any time, if you decide you want to change this, I'm going to go right back to a Roman marble statue of a man. And this time I'm going to type in cartoony vector style to change the style of the image. And I've got a completely different style image again. I can add it. And so now anytime I can go back into my layers and see the di different versions I've been working with. And that's just a really cool feature and it's a, just a handy tool. So that's basically how to use generative masks and layers. But let's dive a little deeper into some use cases. I'm gonna completely start from scratch. Now one thing you can use this for is basic photo editing. So if I decide to go over here to add an image, I can pick my image here pop it in there. But before I do, I just want to quickly note that you can also bring your folder over and simply drag the image in and it'll import it that way as well. The first thing I would say is that one of the basic things you can do is if we want to change the background, we can either draw in a background like we did before, but another little hack that you can do with this feature is once you have everything lined up, grab your eraser tool and erase the background. And that's a little bit rough, but then we get our generation mask and paint over the background, overlapping a little bit into the photo. We say, beach, DSLR photo, sunny day, generate. And straight away, you can see how powerful this is when it adds that background in there and even like blends the hair in nicely. It does a really good job of performing that action. 
Now I'm gonna bring this image across. So I've hit this button and I've popped it on there now. The other thing you can do is work on things like changing eye color. Now I've got control here at the moment. What I'm gonna do is grab my draw tool, bring that brush size right down and we're gonna do something a little bit crazy just to help demonstrate the power of it. This might not be what you would do specifically, but I'm gonna bring the opacity down, the brush down and just kind of draw some purple in that eye. Again, we get our mask using these square brackets to make that brush smaller. And if I really wanna keep the eyes about the same shape and not just completely regenerate the eyes, I bring the presets down to pro and I just say, so I say eyes with a purple iris, generate. You can see how we've changed the color of the eyes, but still managed to maintain the shape of the eyes. Now there is another tip that I haven't been following so far that I definitely wanna share. And I, it's one I mentioned earlier. If we come to our layers here, you'll notice I've got the image and I've drawn onto that image. So I'm gonna bring this image across. And if I decide I wanna do further edits, once again, I wanna go into my layers. I wanna click the plus symbol to create a blank layer above the photo. So that way I'm not making edits directly into the photo. I am making edits onto a new layer. So now I can grab my brush tool. I can even pick the color of his hair with the eye picker. And I can start to draw something such as a mustache or even a goatee and beard. Now one graphic design thing I do a lot, and I do this in Photoshop, is I reference the colors of a photo when I'm adding elements. So again, I can come back to this little spot here, grab my little dropper tool and pick the highlighted area about there. And I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller, bring that opacity up, bring that right down, and start to introduce some highlights into that beard as well. I'm gonna go back to control, grab my mask, clear it, and draw over the mustache again. This time I simply type in beard, hit generate. Now you can see how that beard has been added. I bring it across again. I come back to my layers. I'm gonna turn off layer five and show you that I can go from the beard to clean anytime. And as I said before, I can come down here. I can even duplicate this layer. I'm going to turn off beard details here. I've still got layer seven, which is the duplicated layer. Turn off all of the other layers. Click on layer seven, get my eraser tool and square brackets to bring that brush size down. And if I want him to have just the mustache, I can remove the beard, go back to my layers, turn on this and you can see we get the beard back. If you get any funny little issues like this at the end, grab that mask tool, clear the mask, just paint around there, remove beard and generate without a prompt and it fixes it up. And that is with no prompt whatsoever. So you can use this to edit photos pretty easily and it's actually, it's quite powerful. So you can use both the generation mask and the layers to get a really powerful editing workflow right within your browser here in Chroma. And you can see by adding these layers, it's starting to get more towards it, like almost like an AI version of Photoshop, which I think is really cool. And now I can bring this over and then I can use my brush tool to even draw semi-transparent glasses or sunglasses. I can add objects. Really your imagination is the limit. You just go through with the same processes and you get something pretty cool. What you can also do is move on to editing your own artwork. So I'm gonna start again with a blank canvas. So I have a blank canvas again, and this time I'm gonna import some artwork. This is when I was first started learning Photoshop and my way around actually create a 3D render uh, in 3D Studio Max because I was learning a whole bunch of different skills and I created this. Now, it looks very low poly and a little bit unimpressive, but what I can do is use this as a starting point. I can basically get my generation mask and because it's a bit rough around the edges, I can just come around and I can use it to kind of smooth out those edges by hitting generate with nothing in the prompt bar. And now you can see it's a bit smoother. So if I actually clear that mask, you can see where we've got the little corners forming. Now it's sort of been smoothed out. So I can quite easily use that uh, pretty effectively. And another thing I can do is basically extend this image. Now I'm gonna bring this across. I'm gonna come up to my layers and turn off everything except for this top layer here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how we can kind of extend off of this image. So if I've only got the head here, we don't have a body, we don't have a background. So what I'm essentially gonna do is I'm going to grab my eraser tool and erase around the head. Now I actually recommend using a smaller brush to start with so you can get a lot finer and then use a bigger brush to kind of like step it out from there. 
Now, like we did in the photo, we're actually not going to select a background and work from there. What I'm going to do instead is come back up to layers, add a new layer to drag underneath, and we're going to turn off the top layer. And without using any generative mask, I'm going to just type in a blank prompt to generate a scene. Spaceships in outer space, Unreal 3D render. I hit generate. We got this which I think is pretty cool, but I want to go something a bit darker, dark void. And I'm actually pretty happy with that. I'm going to move this over and I have this image here. And of course I can use my select tool to kind of move things around a bit if I want to and have more sort of planetary stuff in there. And then I can go back up to my layers, turn on my alien and drag it up top. And now I have an alien sitting there above and I can still take this object, move it around and now grab my color tool, my selection, and pick the green of the alien. From here, I can go into my layer system here, come down one, add new one, although it adds it straight to the top. So bring it down beneath, and then I can draw an alien body. And you see it appears behind his head. I can draw an alien body here. And then I can even just darken it up and add a few shadows, even some highlights. So I've drawn a very basic alien body. So now I get my generation mask, draw over the top of the body here. This time I type in alien body. Hit generate. And then you see it's created an alien body. And then of course I can continue to make edits, selecting areas of the face, regenerating, smoothing out bits and pieces. I can blend bits and pieces in. And with the layer system, it's easy for me to sort of draw on particular layers and place things where I need. And you can see the kind of result we're able to end up with after following these processes on a lot of various areas of the image. So not only can I use this to edit my artwork the way it is, I can change the style by using it to establish a base that I want to use just Alpaca Chroma's standard AIR generator to get an image which I think is sort of laid out the way I want, but with the style I'm prompting using AI. So you see what we've been able to achieve by using these tools to lay this stuff out, and we've got some pretty cool images. And again, you can continue to edit and launch using your generative masks or layers from there to get even further results with your images. For example, I drew in and added some little antenna ears to this alien just to finish it off and sort of demonstrate how you can still continue to iterate on those images. So you see how powerful this is. You can edit photos, art, or images of any type by adding or removing objects. You can change backgrounds, extend objects and backgrounds, smooth out details, and you can shoot for a final image or even create a base image to generate from. And this is all super easy as you can organize and reorder certain objects with layers, which is really powerful for AI art. This is a level of control you will not normally get in an AI art generator. So check out Alpaca's Chroma tool again today if you haven't already. These new tools make it a lot of fun and I'll thank them for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Have a great day.